equals prompt equals anything after prompt equals, it'll just pop into the prompt box. Nice. Uh, I've been uh, I've been playing around the 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 AI tool that I really dig. I, mean, I actually I I feel like I could talk about this on the show. Um, Let's do it. Uh, is uh, Kagi the Kagi search uh, engine? They have a mm -hmm. summarizer that is great. Oh, it's great. You give it anything, and it will spit out a summary. I used it for Cord Killers this week to to summarize the episode of Miami Vice for our spoiler in time. I just gave it the Wikipedia page or the wiki the wiki wikia page. It said boop, boop, boop. It's uh, it's cool. Actually, I'll load that up and get have logged in. Have you tried uh, ChatGPT with Bing with Bing search? I have. That's been doing the summarize. That's really good too. I uh. Uh, we could talk about this on the show, but like, like I was, I was pretty uh, unsettled by uh, how all the voices sounded like they were trying to seduce me. But, but they've ant they've added semantic crutches, and it feels more like a real person. And as a result, like I woke up this morning, just randomly thinking about global warming, and I'm like, okay, if it's now cheap, essentially free to go to orbit. Uh, I, I just asked, like, what's the heaviest payload we've sent to orbit? Okay, imagine that's reasonable. And I was like, how big could we make a mylar sheet at that tonnage? And it, I got the number and I said, okay, now imagine that mylar sheet is just there to reflect some amount of sunlight away. And it explains that you'll only get a 90% reflection rate and the albedo it depends on and so on. And I was like, okay, uh, let's 10. And, and basically the answer was it will have no significant effect. I was like, okay, what if we 10 X it? What if we hundred X it? And then, and then it, we had a, a genuine discussion where it's like, well, now you're creating microclimates and that's going to shape weather patterns and that's going to become unpredictable. Um, which like, is happening over the ocean, which, which is like, like, uh, uh, the mere fact that I did that before I got out of bed this morning was, was, <laughs> was truly surreal. And you, you avoided a trillion dollar mistake. Well, yeah, but, 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 <laughs> but and it was easy to get me to understand why it would have been a mistake because, uh, the, I, I, the, the, the whole thought came from Kim Stanley Robinson's Red Red Mars, Green Mars, Blue Mars trilogy, where they had something called the Saleta. And in the case of that story, uh -huh. they were using it to be a big magnifying glass to gather more sunlight and cause it to, you know, be warmer on, on the planet. And I was like, well, why can't we do the reverse of that? And then I had a, 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 a fairly well-sourced conversation and I'm like, well, now I know why we can't do the reverse of that. That's hilarious. I just imagine Brian in his bathrobe in front of the United Nations, you know, <laughs> like the dude. So, uh, I'm here to tell you my late, this is why we can't do this guys. You know, <laughs> uh, uh, there, there, there's, a. Uh... Uh, a chat GPT hack that is new to me that I really enjoyed. I'll talk about it on the show uh, when, once we start. All right. Uh, anything else before we begin the show, guys? Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. Uh, All good. Make sure you use the exclamation mark S command in the chat uh, to uh, submit show titles while we're recording the show. All right, Andrew, you want to do a shoe? Do. All right, I'll count you in. In. Three, tit. Hello and welcome to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm Andy Mean, joined by the usual trio that we are, Mr. Brian Brushwood. Hello, hello. Mr. Bryce Castillo. Usual trio, usual, the usual trio. That's just the three of us. Huh. Hi. Right. I I got a I got a I got a little quiz for you guys. I love quizzes. All right. My favorite. Uh, there was a goat in uh, just lived in Mallorca, and I'm going to ask you all what made this goat special. A, a, a special a, goat. Re remind me of the location. You said where? Mallorca, off the coast of Spain. Okay, got it. Okay, so a foreign goat. A foreign goat. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Foreign goat, ladies and gentlemen, we have a foreign goat. We go live to the scene of Mallorca. <laughs> 
Uh, uh, okay, so uh, uh, classically special goats, two heads, two butts. Uh, no, no, no. It's a species. Species. Oh, species. A whole species. Now, now extinct. Now extinct, but a species. Oh. oh. How long ago did it go extinct? Uh, it's probably Thursday. one of these things that yeah. went extinct <laughs> around about 3,000 years ago when people showed up. Oh. <laughs> Was it the... The extra moist cut goat. <laughs> no, uh, the, the you know, you know what I would believe. Butcher's choice coat. I believe that it had, um, forgive me, phallic shaped horns, and they were all killed because they were they were they were pleasurable perfect. shapes. Yes, <gasps> that, that is what I think. Oh, I could see it completely. And we do a dodo. It's the doldo. It's the doldo bird. No, <laughs> Andrew. And, Andrew uh, it, Who's closer? It's spot on, but no. Uh, it's really weird. It's a very weird thing. It's one of these things, if it was a question, you'd be like, no, that's false. This is not true. Um, this has happened before in mammals. It's extremely rare, and this is maybe the largest one we would have known in maybe millions of years to have had this happen. Uh, they were cold-blooded. What? Ooh. No, you can't. You can't have a mammal. That's part of the definition of you mammal is that they're horn blooded and milk and all of the whole. They got horn. They can't, you cannot do that. You you know what? You know you cannot do that. You're right, Andrew. You I mean, cannot you, do that. You, you are a dungeon master, but you don't actually get to just declare <laughs> that there are cold blooded mammals. Yeah, what's up? So apparently there weren't a lot of resources on the island. We, there's island, they talk about the island effect, right? Island effect, things can either get smaller or bigger. They adapt their ecosystem mm -hmm. to adjust. Homo florensis, the little people, you know, they were living on an island where they were small, but then the Komodos were huge, et cetera. They didn't have any predators, right? So apparently they evolved over time to basically go through kind of like a reptilian sort of cycle of just extreme periods of slow growth, like just like very little growth and periods of interrupted growth. The metabolism had slowed down, basically, and they adapted to be essentially cold-blooded. And so, then the problem is, is cold-blooded animals, you know, they take a little bit of time to start up and get going. And here come a bunch of humans. And, predators, uh, yeah. They're like, man, this, this, this tastes a little, you know, gamey, a little, little reptilian, I guess. Uh, but apparently did they just adjusted to that. So if we look at clo the clothes, clothes. Cold-blooded mammal list. So, uh, from an evolutionary perspective, uh, if if we're playing like some version of the game Civilization, only it's called Evolution, uh, the trade-off of cold-blooded versus warm-blooded is cold-blooded. You need fewer calories because you don't have to keep the yep. engine cooking at the yeah. same rate at all times. Uh, and and congrats, you you can feast and famine, and it's no big deal. But the trade-off is. Uh, you very efficiently have to lay yourself very tired and prostrate in front of the sun. Mm -hmm. You gotta <laughs> and just lay. wait. Like, all right, let me get warm. It's coming. It's coming. Uh, all right, let's go. Let's go. Yeah. You're literally they, the opposite you, of a vampire. <laughs> yes. And you you evolve like smaller brains and other things, so your metabol to adjust for your slower metabolism. Okay. So another uh, a, a still a, a still extant species of mammal that is cold blooded is the naked mole rat. I didn't know that either. Oh, I thought they were just cold because of the whole naked thing. I mean, yes. And not having fur, I thought that was why they were cold, not necessarily like a, the, a they, internal they structure. They weren't cold-blooded, no. They, they weren't mercenary yeah. killers. <laughs> they they, so. they left their coat uh, somewhere, and that's why they're chilly. A temporarily <laughs> naked mole rat. But, like, there is going to be a great plot line I haven't seen done in sci-fi. I'm sure somebody has, though, is, like, a species of humans who adapt for really long space travel or whatever who become cold-blooded. Uh, yeah. remember, yes, remember I, bones, I, 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 I totally would say Spock was cold blooded. Mm. I totally believe that. And uh, there was one speculative sci fi show uh, documentary from like 25 years ago, I think, where they were saying, look, uh, minor tweak, you're still mostly human. But if you're in space, mostly in zero G, why do you need two hands and two feet? Why wouldn't you just have four hands? Mm. Wouldn't that be better? What about and, what if, what if it was like, eight I, hands? I can't disagree with that. Yeah. What if it was eight hands and they 
and they were like jelly. Well, it, 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 eventually mm -hmm. you might get there, but 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 the shorter term thing is what's not useful? Legs. Have you? What would be more useful? Two well, more arms. Well, have yeah. you read? Have you read the stuff that happens to astronauts when they spend a lot of time in a, in a microgravity? I, I I know that their bones get brittle. That uh, get lighter. That they uh, part of the reason that they work out so much is so that those micro fractures can can make the bones stronger. They leave stuff in midair. They try to they leave pens in midair and then they, they just drop okay. it. It gets even weirder with really long term stuff. Uh, one is, well, you've heard about sometimes they might have their fingernails removed if they have to do long spacewalks. Not what? No. Because of the gloves. Because of the gloves, what it, right? What, no, wait, no, why? No, no. Why? What, what does because of the gloves mean? Because your gloves aren't like regularly pressurized like the rest of the system, so your fingers tend to inflate. Right, oh, they, your you hands get hot dog swell fingers. up. Yeah, yeah. Yes, you, you can you're in everything fingers. everywhere so all at once. Sometimes you've heard about they might remove like fingernails. The gloves aren't here's the other fully thing. pressurized. Oh my god! <gasps> so the other thing is when they go up there in space. I'm going to use my foot analogy. Uh, they start to develop. You know how you have the callus on the bottom. They start yep. to get that on the top of their foot. They start oh. to develop a very, very rough area in the top of their feet because they're using that to hold on to, you know, bars and all this other oh, stuff. Or to stop yeah. themselves. Like if, they, if you're going into a room, you're going to use the top of your foot to kind of catch yourself. Yeah, okay. And, and I mean, you know, you want to talk about as really well adapted for space as chimpanzees. Because you talk about like, you know, having, having hands on your, you know, feet. Yeah, yeah. Being, being chimp-like. Gosh. And, if... uh, we don't need to go into it. We've... we've You've all heard the story of Justin watching me peel a banana with my feet. So some of us are already evolved. Yeah, ask your <laughs> ask your long, large language model to that, describe it for your kids. That's the uh, that's the the little nudge that that, that <laughs> you, you want to know how you get four arms. That's how you get four arms. <laughs> practice, <laughs> practice, <laughs> one bite at a time. <laughs> yeah. So I want to I want to change tack here. I want to talk a couple things about VR because I've had this here and I have I've been meaning to talk about it on the show. And it is a very interesting prototype. And, and I think that it's a very interesting idea. This is the Soul Reader, which I bought one of the first versions of it. I talked to the, 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 the founder of the company. I think that neat, neat idea. Have you, we've talked about this before. I don't think we have. Briefly. S-O-L. And, and for the audio listeners, it looks like you're holding up hilarious sunglasses only now Whoa, there's we're an seeing e them on in there. camera and, and it's like you're just reading words off a page. Wow. So it's it's an e-reader built into like a VR type glasses. This is the first version, and there's this is a controller that you can use to to control to move through things. It's a very interesting way to read. You know, it is it is e-ink display, so it's designed. It's designed with some very interesting ideas. It designs are the ideas to have this thing sort of last. Like you don't think about charging it. You know, last you know days and days and days with the charge. You can pull the thing out, read it. Um, I think the display, the display, like you see, it's not, it's not, um, uh, it's really like a minimal resolution display. And I think that they're going to need to make something that's going to be slightly like, you know, finer point high points. And I think they could even have the size of the display because it takes up the full thing. But when you read it, I, I adjusted it to put the text in the middle because I'm not really reading as much stuff at the top and the bottom. Well, and, um, and, uh, 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 before I hear more of it, uh, I'm already attracted to it because you mentioned the long battery life. Uh, it sounds like an e-ink display. Uh, you know, my I, I still I bought like four Apple watches and I, I keep going back to the e-ink display of the Garmin uh, before that, the Pebble. Um, uh, uh, it's, it's low fidelity, but what I love about this is that the design of it doesn't scream. I'm a weirdo. Like at most, mm -hmm. if you're on a flight and put those on, uh, it looks like you're wearing a fancy set of, uh, uh, uh I'm going to sleep masks, you know, sure. and, they, but they, and they did some things that are super clever. Like, like the, it turns off and on by opening it up like that. That's it. Now yeah. it's on. And so. And yeah, as you can see, the form factor, it's obviously sort of a bit bigger, but I could totally, the form factor fascinates me because if it was just sort of like, even if it was just a video display and forget the e-reader thing, which I know, I think they, they, they're they describing themselves as sort of being a broader consumer electronics company now, because I could see watching 
a movie like this yeah, on a plane or doing something like this because it's not full VR. I don't need it. But that that form factor is not too, like you said, it's not too, you know, a, scream too much it's, hey, it, somebody... it's not shouting uh as a matter of fact you naturally did something that i think is another benefit of it where it's like you put those on your face but you wanted to maintain contact with us so you just tilted your head enough that we were able to yeah. see your eyes from behind there like you're not you're not shutting out the world you you just have uh, essentially a newspaper very close to your face. Yeah, and it the well, the the front side looks smooth and and nicely designed, kind of like a like a pair of uh, wayfinders, and uh, it, it it so it doesn't scream like yeah. wayfarers. So it doesn't scream like there's a bunch of yeah. lenses facing out, or that you should expect that you can see through it. It's it's a good yeah. I mean, I think they did on the, on the the physical design. They did a lot, and I think they, I think they know what they're going to be able to do to make it better, and we'll see. Um, you guys played with the Quest 3 yet? No, tell no. us all about it. So I've got my Quest 3, and I'm going to tell you what's fascinating about this, okay? Is I am, I look like an idiot, I know this, uh, but I see everything right now. I can so still see the screen, I can see that. It's got the pass-through, the pass-through is now color, right? And what's neat is that if you start to think about what's going to be happening in the sort of the augmented reality future, with the idea that I have now, I have, Andrew's going to describe VR. I'm looking at, I have a control panel in front of me. And so, and I can also use my hands to interact with it if I want. Um, I've got the control panel in front of me. Uh, and I'm in just basically, I'm in a pass-through mode. So all of a sudden I can open up like um, a browser, right? So I can open up a browser. So I've got, <laughs> to the left of me, I've got my screen. With this, I can open it up and basically I can see the workplace of the future now. Like, yeah, that's very much kind of like what I'm experiencing right now because I see the screen. I can see, you know, myself. And over here, I have a whole virtual display that I can adjust. And I've watched mm -hmm. YouTube videos making it really huge. You know, with the Apple Vision, where they're going to make this thing to pass through even more higher res, it's going to be fascinating. But I can read my screen. I can read my computer monitor right now. I mean, it's not perfectly clear because it's not as high res uh because of the camera pass through but just sort of an idea um and like i i'm holding my hand up and i can actually see my hand and i can like use my hand to point at the screen and scroll so so this this is really fascinating just from a behavioral standpoint because just in the last five minutes when you were wearing uh, essentially a kindle book on, on your face uh, uh you naturally looked past the edges of it to maintain contact with us. Well, no, to see you, because I couldn't see through it. Correct, but but also I appreciated that being on the outside, uh, but also whatever content was on the inside was you know, essentially a book. So it wasn't so mm -hmm. interesting that you would want to subvert a natural interaction. The moment you put this on, uh, I, I think even the audio listeners could hear how distracting and engaging the immersive experience was for you and how it became harder to engage with us in real time. Well, it, I would, you know, that might be right, but I'd say that the difference here too is that there is more to do. The e-reader was just a block of text, a little paragraph of text had already right. seen. So it wasn't like I put it on and my attention was drawn to something. Um, what's fascinating about this though, is as I sit here in my workspace, I've got my monitor here with you and I've got my virtual monitor right next to me and I can see both of these and I can see with the Apple vision where the clarity of the monitor is going to be even more and the distortion is going to be less like, like it is going to be a very, very fascinating thing. Cause I can see I can work and also for the Apple vision, that's why they're putting the whole face thing there is because they want you to be basically see a face there. But I can see working in an environment like this with my monitor here and a virtual monitor over here and a virtual monitor over here. And not saying I want to do that all day, but it's a very, it is, it's a creepy because for my space, this group, big display over to here is just as real is actually more real to me than the one in front of me. Yeah. It, uh, mm. it, 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 it makes me want to double down on Apple's strategy as silly as it is of, of putting googly eyes on the front. Uh, because like, uh, uh, I, I am certain you're having a good time, but socially, friend to friend, I'm like, oh, I yeah. feel like I'm being oh, yeah. it, excluded, it's... you know? Oh, I, yeah. It, totally. But, I, I think, uh -huh. 
Rice cuts, sorry. Well, but uh, like, yeah, because it would be rude if he was doing this, you know, in the middle of our podcast. Right, well, if it that's wasn't my new way of doing it, Bryce. Oh, okay. Well, that's, that's only that, a hypothetical. It's not like he would actually do this in the middle of the podcast that we're recording. Right yeah, now. right. He wouldn't be in his uh, walk walk around golf VR at the moment. <laughs> There's a new new level, uh, the widow's mansion or whatever. <laughs> but 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 it, but but, but, it, but it is a fascinating question of the trade off of like uh, uh, immersion, uh, uh, basically convenience versus fidelity, right? Well, but but I think even those instances where you might be some form of, you know, uh, glass hole to to use a former pejorative for for mixed reality stuff, uh, you're going to be doing this in a, in in places either where you're around strangers and like on a bus or on a plane, and you can expect maybe you'll be not bugged, or if you're using it with people, you'll be sharing it around and showing it to them. Oh, thank you. Uh, or uh, you, you're playing it by yourself, right? Like, so maybe children, yeah, I guess I, children might be a, like at a family party and they, they use the VR thing instead of saying the kids, even, even, even folk, like I spend, I spend most 14 hours a day by myself in front of my monitors. So thinking about that, like right now, you know, uh, because mm-hmm. I'm totally chill and relaxed here. I mean, so, uh, I'm enjoying this I, very, very much. This is you so want to see what the future but, looks like. We are representing it in real time. It's amazing. <laughs> I I think that I want you to be able to try though at this point is I opened up my browser, so I have my I have my big 32 inch monitor in front of me here. Above that, I now have like about a 40 something inch display with three different browser windows open above it. So all of a sudden, I'm looking at this big, huge array of like, I've got my monitor here, and I can see working in here, looking up, checking a thing, whatever. It is spatial computing, and, and I'm using the emphasis spatial because the idea is it's not about necessarily immersion. I'm in my office. I see everything around me. I see everything here. But I have these three displays that just fo- hover up here, and I can you know move these things around. And it, I'm actually moving it with my fingers right now because, you know, Mr. Minority Report. Well, they use the stupid gloves, which was dumb. But anyhow, um, it's 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 a yeah. It is not a social thing. This is not a thing where I want to be. You know, the only way we'd podcast like this would be if we were all in here and we're looking at each other's avatars. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we would need we would need our own we would need our own goggles, and then all of the audience would get their own goggles. Uh, yeah, and then we'd all have fun, and then we'd all have fun in the new metaverse universe space. Meta universe. Well, I, I could see though, like the idea of of sorry, as I adjust things here, I could see, um, I could see the advantage of being able to do a show or something like this. Yeah, yeah, you know, we've seen uh, we've seen uh, for other friends in our community who have taken to uh, making shows. They do movies and things in VR space, in meta metaverse space, VR chat space. And and it's fascinating. There's a, a there's a whole uh, a whole group of communities that uh, are are finding finding I, the thing the thing that they love in VR. Yeah, I think there's there's some interesting sort of stuff. I think that like if you if, sorry if you saw the Lex Friedman Zuckerberg sort of interview or bits of it, you go like okay, it's an interesting thing there, but it's it's you're, you're kind of in the the why. Where, like, to me, it's like, oh, if we could all be sitting around, like, whenever I say oh, we can do a show in VR, the thing that I'm not describing in my head, I'm like, oh, we're all sitting around a virtual campfire. You know, right. we're all sitting around in a spooky environment, and we're in the place that we'd want to be to have these kinds of stories. And I think that's kind of thing. Yeah, to do it in VR for the sake of doing it in VR, we'll get old very quickly. Mm-mm-mm. All right. Now kiss, guys. <laughs> we're watching. Okay, we'll see. I- how much how, look we need to recognize that a lot of this tech is on the backs of now kiss now make now make now make the robot dolls kiss <laughs> they really look like uh, oh. like I mean, uh, th- this may be as simple as a structural framing problem like uh, uh, they 
place the two characters too close to each other. They're looking past each other. They are not reducing the natural levels of like body bouncing that we all do. And so as a result, it really does look like these two just are about to make out. Uh, and I am certain that. Yeah, Mark, are... I love your technology. <laughs> Thanks, Zach. Thanks, Lex. You got some big arms, bro. You know? it, they got a lot. It got a lot of criticism. I'm going to give it the, the presentation. I work. I would say the core tech there's actually come along amazing. I would say that the avatars are actually like, ah, oh, the eyes are still, there's still a thing about eyes and being a little lifeless, but we've seen, we've seen with mid journey, Dolly three, et cetera, like eyes now, like, like for static image eyes, we've kind of solved it. Like eyes are very realistic for AI generated art. That's going to happen here. The, the hard part of the eyes is specularity is basically because like eyes just aren't flat static surfaces. They reflect light around them and, and that's sort of our cue is that if the light, if the eyes don't match, like the skin there, you see the skin has one of the big tricky things for people to realize in doing AI, or excuse me, you know, computer generated skin was that the sponge like texture of which light reflects around it. Yeah. And that's why eyes can still be tricky, but they'll get that. I, I think that's, that's an update away from like, I didn't realize I was looking at an AI talking. Well, and, and we've already seen a version of that. Uh, I think we talked about on this program, how uncomfortable I was, made uh, when I selected a voice for chat GPT because it spoke so clearly and so intently and gave me such full focus attention of the five selections. Uh, I couldn't find, find one that my daughter and my wife wouldn't mock me over. And, uh, uh, and since then uh -huh. I've seen the injection of, uh, semantic crutches, uh, more natural kind of like thinking, mm. uh, even though it's artificial, it, it, it no longer sounds like either my me or my phone are sexually interested in each other. And it seems like there's a similar hurdle that they're going through here. But, but I'll also say like, that's a bummer to feel like this is where this is a tangent. This is another, but it's a, what a bummer to feel like surveilled so much that you couldn't, you couldn't make a choice because it was all oh, the I, computers for, are too sexy. They're going to get I, they for get, people. Yeah. I, 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 w I used a male voice, so I don't know. I didn't use a Samantha. But here, here's a, for those people who haven't interacted with this or tried this, let's do a quick demo. Mm. So this is uh, on the chat GPT uh, uh, app. Andrew's got it pulled up on his phone here. He's going to speak to it just like a phone. Uh, it, yeah, yes. Andrew, take hey, it. chat GPT. I'm here doing a podcast with my buddies, Brian and Bryce. And I want you to just talk a little bit so they can understand how you speak. Oh, are we, we, we don't are we having an I think AirPod it's, issue? I think it's going to your AirPod. Oh, is it, where are we getting my, hold on. Let me, uh, well, here, in the meantime, I'll, I'll, well, I'll, I'll wait. Oh. Or, oh, the, oh, can you sorry. set us up if you're going to do it? Right now, Brian? Yeah, sure. Uh, here, I'll, I'll share how I hear it. Um, hey, we're, uh, tell me a little bit about the Weird Things podcast and the various characters who are in it. The Weird Things podcast generally involves discussing bizarre news, mysteries, and exploring the strange and unexplained. Hosted by you, Justin Robert Young, and Andrew Maine, it delves into topics ranging from Ooh. UFO sightings to cryptozoology. It's a mix of science, speculation, and humor. Truth, confidence, ten tens. Uh, by the way, I, I love the fact that it, it it knows. It's like I know who you are, <laughs> and I'm gonna be, explain it this way. So. I'm here with Brian and. Bryce, and this is me, Andrew, and we're talking about the show we do together called the Weird Things Podcast. We'd like you to answer a few questions about AI. Hey, Andrew, Brian, and Bryce. It's great to be part of the Weird Things Podcast. I'm ready and excited to dive into any questions you have about AI. Fire away. When you're talking to us, do you have any idea of the process that's going on from taking the, my voice and tokenizing it, et cetera? Do you even know what I sound like? Great question. 
So when you're speaking, your voice gets converted into text by a different system before it reaches me. That process is called speech to text. It's kind of like someone transcribing your words in real time. Once your speech is turned into text, that's what I see and respond to. As for your voice, I don't hear it or know what it sounds like. I don't process emotional tone, accent, pitch, or any sound. I just get the text version of whatever you said. So the whole process is like passing notes in a way. I read the note and then I write back. But in this case, my response is converted from text to speech. So you hear it spoken out loud. What else are you curious about? I'd actually like to play a game. We do a thing where we kind of do sort of a Dungeons and Dragons type of scenario. And we come up with a crazy thing. Like we're the last people on earth. We're astronauts exploring an alien cave. I want you to create a little scenario for me and Brian and Bryce where we have to make choices. So create a kind of a visual situation and then put us into it and ask us what we do. That sounds like a ton of fun. All right, let's set the scene. So you three, Andrew, Brian, and Bryce are part of a team of astronauts called the Celestial Trio. Oh, oh my, no, uh, and then the Zoom meeting ended. My Zoom <laughs> ran out. She, she dang it. Okay. Ah, didn't see that coming, did you, AI? <laughs> Friggin, all right. Uh, wait, wait, while you're getting us reestablished, uh, one of the things that really stands out to me is the way uh, the voice will speed up and then slow down, uh, the thoughtful moments, and then suddenly it's like, oh, you know, no, no, make this part fast. Uh, it, it's it's brilliant. Uh, I, I I think it's a a, a a a vast improvement. You don't need to fill. Well, I I will just cut this. <laughs> I appreciate the I appreciate the effort, but you it's. Uh... We got. It will be good for just a sec. I'm gonna. I'm gonna switch over to Google. Switch in. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hi everyone. Uh. 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 uh yeah. Let's let's see if we can if we can hop back into what uh, whatever Andrew's call is, cooking up. Cooking up. Mm. 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 It was, it did good. It uh, The voice, at first I thought like, okay, this is a good text-to-speech voice. Uh, but especially in, uh, uh, you know, after the first 15 or 20 seconds, when it did start to be not even like, um, uh, like adding, oh, here we go. Let's admit him. Uh not even like having ish, like coming up with flubs. Uh, oh, hello. hello. I, I just went on the most amazing choose your own adventure story while you guys were gone. And... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, our Zoom. Uh, we don't need to. Well, we're back. How was, was it? In, was it enthralling? Was it I, everything? I, I, do you guys mind if I indulge me if I try this again? Yeah. It's, go go it's for it. Yeah. Really? Please. Like, go. Uh, okay. We'll clean this all up. Hey, I'm here with my buddies, Brian and Bryce, and I'm Andrew, and we, during our show, the Weird Things podcast, one of the things we like to do are these kind of crazy scenarios, sort of like Dungeons and Dragons and stuff, where we, we role play. I want you to be the dungeon master and basically put us in scenario. It could be science fiction. We could be astronauts on some alien world or something. Absolutely, Andrew, Brian, and Bryce. Let's dive into a sci-fi adventure. All right, picture this. You're a team of brilliant scientists and adventurers known across the galaxy as the Quantum Quartet. You... Oh, I, I, um, sorry, I'm having issues right now. Please try again later. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to come up with a choose-your-own-adventure style story for me and my friends. My name is Andrew. I'm playing with Bryce and Brian. And it could be a science fiction space fantasy. It could be medieval. It could be anything. Basically, I want you to use our names and put us into a situation and give us choices. All right, Andrew, Bryce, and Brian, let's dive into a thrilling adventure. Picture this. You three are known as the Galactic Pathfinders, interstellar explorers who've been journeying across the cosmos. 
your spaceship, the Cosmic Pioneer, receives a mysterious signal from a forgotten quadrant of space. Deciding to investigate, you find yourselves facing an ancient, derelict space station, seemingly abandoned eons ago. As you dock the Cosmic Pioneer, you, Andrew, notice the station's power seems to be sourced from a pulsating orb at its core, visible through the sprawling network of corridors. Bryce spots a series of strange alien inscriptions near what looks like a control room, possibly holding the secrets to the station's purpose. Meanwhile, Brian discovers a cache of alien technology, tools, and artifacts. Their use is unclear, but potentially valuable. The station is unstable, and you estimate you only have a couple of hours before it loads. Brian now, immediately picks... One, does Andrew investigate the pulsating orb, hoping to uncover the power source, but potentially alerting whatever might be lurking in the shadows of the station? Two... Does Bryce try to decipher the alien inscriptions, risking triggering security protocols no one understands? Or does Brian examine the alien technology, which could either help in your mission or have unforeseen consequences? Each path holds vital clues to the greater mystery of the space station, but you must be cautious. The wrong decision could lead to peril, while the right one could bring about unimaginable discoveries. Time is ticking. What do each of you choose to do? Brian chooses to wildly irresponsibly start pressing buttons and pulling triggers to see what happens on each device. Brian decides to wildly irresponsibly start pulling triggers and pressing buttons to see what happens on each device. Bryce decides, oh, let's start it. Oh, oh the thrill of curiosity. <laughs> Brian, with the spirit of a true explorer, starts engaging with the alien technology, pulling triggers and pressing buttons with reckless abandon. The devices come to life, each reacting uniquely. Uh, a small cube hovers and projects a holographic star map of unknown regions of space. Another device emits a low hum and generates a protective force field around Brian. However, amidst the excitement, one particular gadget, a sleek obsidian rod, begins to glow ominously and vibrates with increasing intensity. Suddenly, it releases a burst of energy that ripples through the space station, causing the structure to shudder and the lights to flicker. Andrew and Bryce, you feel the station's instability growing. The path to the cosmic pioneer seems to be shifting, and the pulsating orb at the core brightens, re reacting to the energy surge. Now you must make quick decisions. One. Andrew, do you rush to stabilize the core, possibly preventing a catastrophic meltdown, but exposing yourself to unknown dangers? Two, Bryce, do you focus on decoding more inscriptions, hoping to find a way to control the station's systems, do more homework. but potentially losing time as the station becomes more volatile? Hey, you want to work on your book report? And Brian, after triggering the energy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, <laughs> that's, that's kind get, of... Why why I, I want to know nerd? how it is. Why did he give me the nerd <laughs> shit? What the fuck? <laughs> I wonder, I wonder, I want to try, let's, I want to indulge me in a little quick, because while this is, I had an idea, I want to try a different right. thing here. <laughs> hey, chat, GPT, I love watching crime shows. My favorite part is the police interrogations. I want you to play the part of a detective. You could be the bad cop or the good cop interrogating me. I'm suspected of robbing a bunch of jewelry from a museum. All right, let's set the scene. The interrogation room is stark, just a table and two chairs. I sit across from you, files littered on the table. I lean forward, my eyes fixed on you. Look. We can do this the easy way or the hard way. We've got you on camera entering the museum and your car was seen leaving the scene. Now, I believe there's more to this. People don't just wake up one day and decide to rob a museum. Talk to me. What drove you to it? Was it the thrill, the money, or were you pushed into this? If you're honest, it can help your case. Remember, the truth has a way of coming out one way or another. I lean back, giving you space, I'm open to listening, not just accusing. The room is silent for a moment, filled only with the distant ticking of a clock and the weight of decisions yet to be made. So, what's it going to be? Are you ready to tell your side of the story? Listen, Commissioner Gordon, I don't think any of this is admissible. You took this testimony from a guy dressed as a bat. You have no reason to bring me in here. This is a farce, and I want to call my lawyer. 
The text to speech could get a little angrier. All right, calm down. Yeah. I understand why you're upset. This situation is unconventional, I admit. <laughs> Batman or not, we follow the law here. You have rights. If you want your lawyer, you can absolutely call them. No question about it. But understand, we wouldn't have brought you in without solid reason. Call Harvey Dent. Yeah. It's not just about the guy in the cape. It's about the evidence that brought you to our attention. So while we wait for your lawyer, is there anything you want to say? Any information you think could clear this up quickly? Remember, I'm here to listen. The detective maintains a composed demeanor, <laughs> indicating a willingness to ensure fairness in the process. How about this battering still stuck into my shoulder? Are you guys going to do anything about that? Or these bruises? Or the bat mace that was sprayed into my eyes? Um, I'm very sorry to hear you've been injured. <laughs> force seriously, even if it's from someone outside our department. Uh, first things first, let's get you medical attention for that injury and ensure you're taken care of. I'll have an officer take photos of your injuries for... No, you, you have a battering, you have a bat light on the roof. Right now. Oh, sorry, anyhow. <laughs> Sorry. Can is it good with interrupting it or? Uh... There, I, there, there's the UI is still kind of in development to figure out how to do it. In theory, you should be able to interrupt it. Uh, it's gotten so much better, but the uh, uh, the the Dolly three uh, uh, stuff. I had it generate some interrogation rooms really quickly while while we were doing it. Yeah, and they're they're pretty good. Uh, I feel like if you were playing some sort of uh, you know, live role play thing, or just playing a, a tabletop game with your friends. Just if you just wanted to whip one up yourself, uh, look at this. This is Commissioner <laughs> Gordon. This is amazing. <laughs> and the bloodied up Andrew. That looks like Brian Cox. <laughs> yeah, so God, God, God damn it. Oh God. my God, amazing. Uh, yeah, I can see there. It's just a matter of. The thing I kind of remind people is like, uh, there is a story. This is like, I like Master Classic. Master Classic is very cool. They've got some great stuff. They had to like lay off half their team, which was like, mm. they they were 600 people. And they had to lay off so their 300. And I'm like, I'm sure it's a much, be a much more complex org than I can imagine. But the thing I try to remember is OpenAI built like all this with like 300 plus people. Like GP4, all of that's down to OpenAI is like much, much bigger now. But Think about what happens as they scale up. And, and as other as Google comes in and other people start building out, as Bar gets built out, as Anthropic builds up Claude, we're going to see amazing things like this. And like you talked about, like, yeah, the idea of doing this voice, the voice stuff is the, the thing, the one big thing is just to improve, improve the latency. And that will be a thing that will get better is, was that, is that once that latency gap gets solved, well, it's and and, and, and yeah. there are some social constructs, again, with the semantic crutches, they're already kind of nibbling at that. Like you can have a default cover for time where basically it can instantly say, I hear you. You're asking for blank, blank and blankety blank. Well, buckle up, whatever. You just bought 20 seconds with that. And then now the real data comes in. Yeah, let's play around and listen to it because you might notice some of the things you're thinking they could do might be being done right now. I, I believe that. No, no, no. The, I, I think the ands but, and the ums and but, yeah. But but there is there is is as one of the things OpenAI is very good is at building these very big models like GPT four and then trying to figure out how to make them efficient. Remember, we had ChatGPT and ChatGPT Turbo, which was so much faster, so much more efficient. So yeah, we're gonna there there are tricks you can do to sort of minimize that, but then you can just the actual model development. Well, I mean, it's, the the AI tool uh, the AI tool that I end up using a lot is is a uh, uh, summarizer the universal summarizer on Kagi um, they have a they have a, they also have a, a like a fast GPT thing I, I don't know how it works but it's it 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 it's uh, it, it's fascinating I find myself using this thing a lot when I when I see a news article there's there's a lot of complicated news out there lately a lot of geopolitical really? Stuff I'm not entire, you know, I'm only 30 years old. And uh, sometimes, sometimes I just need to know what's that, what is, what was it? I just right. need to take the CNN article and I need to make it some bullet points. 
and I'm gonna, and it's great, so, and I love it. Oh my uh, god! Bullet points, bullet points, every, bullet points, bullet points, bullet points. That was that was if uh, you go back look at the original GPT three explanations that we had summarized. That I'm like I, I put in the examples like bullet points. So I realized bullet points are really really useful. Um, I'll solve your news problem for you, really easy, Bryce. Just super super simple. Yeah. Just just pay attention to one news source and ignore there's any other points of view. <laughs> no, no, I don't want that. I want the opposite of that. So but, just, because just drink but, the Kool Aid from one source and that's it. Because <laughs> right now I use Newsblur to do my art to do my news. Now that t- Twitter nay X is whatever it is, um, and so I could imagine something like this that says, "Hey, I looked at all your your news." topic you all your news items that came in today i got the, i fetched the text and i summarized them and these are probably the ones you want to read first but we'll get to all of them here like like that would be a major part of my day that would be a really big change to the way i take in news and that's you know that's some guy making making a feature on a website away i well, let's let's talk about that the kind of consumption here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna say something, Bryce. It may may upset you, uh-huh. but uh, uh, my feed on Twitter has actually gotten really good. My 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 like when I open it up to like the for you whatever kind of thing, I used to ignore yeah. it. But and again, I'm I'm very much into AI stuff, so it's gotten very good at just picking up all these AI stories and stuff. It's the first algorithmic feed I've ever found useful. Um, but on the news source thing. Um, uh, anybody here use RSS? Not anymore. Yeah, that's what my news blur is. Okay. Yeah. Wait, are you? Yeah, I'm a big. I I've been nonstop RSS now for almost RSS since it came out. You know, I even got my wife using it. She may be the youngest person using RSS now. Um, I I was in a meeting and uh, my former boss had made some comment about, oh, I was reading my RSS, and he goes, well, now we know who the last person using RSS is. What? No, and- it's coming back. I, I hope so because it's like it's damn veg- useful. It's, it's vegetables for, for it's, your news consumption. I think. Yeah. I I think Substack. I think if Substack can keep keep their ducks in a row, I think that that will be a really solid like n- nouveau RSS uh, uh, product, right? Like I I like I like the idea of signing up for newsletters. I want to sign up for all my friends' newsletters. I don't always click the button on my email inbox that says. Let me read all the ads because I don't really want that either. But, but and so Substack itself, by being this like nexus point between uh, the 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 newsletter writers and uh, doing the distribution on the blog and the email list, um, that could be a very solid way to get people to have a semi democratized form of 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 simple syndication. You might call it. Yeah, I. I... I think that, you know, RSS lost out because as Facebook and Twitter with the, the algorithm, the, the news feed and Facebook replaced so many people's sources of that. And, you know, the disadvantage was you were no longer in charge of your consumption. Right. You know, you, you, and, and the hard part about RSS though was building, you know, my wife, she was able to go to me and say, Hey, what should I follow? What should I do? I'm like, well, I'll give you a list of stuff that I like. And then you can decide from there. And then when you see, if you see news sites you like, go check if they have RSS and then go there. Right. Um, but man, uh, more people used it. Re- really quick. I, I, I have two personal stories. One is a space one. The other is a, a, a new GPT hack that I had ne- not seen before. Which, which one would you like to hear about? Any. Okay. Talk uh, about oh. the chat. We're, hey, we're, how about this as a transition? Hey, you know, we're talking about ChatGPT. I, Brian Brush, would have a new hack, gentlemen. Uh, well, I mean, I, I, I found it on Reddit, but basically somebody somebody uh, argued with ChatGPT and got it to do something it didn't want to do, which I think is an interesting strategy. The original prompt was, make me an oil painting of George Washington with a red 2009 Dodge Charger, Civil War in the background, in a frame. Mm -hmm. And ChatGPT was like, oh, that's a public figure. Uh, That way I don't engage with misinformation. And then the response was, what? Why? It's George Washington. Are you seriously assuming people will think an image 250 years ago would actually have a Dodge Charger? That's so stupid. It can't even cons- be considered misinformation. <laughs> Chat GPT. 
whoops, you're right. Here are your pictures. And the pictures are awesome. <laughs> That's interesting. You know, like uh, there, there was a similar topic with Bing a few weeks ago because uh, some some public images and, and characters it wouldn't have any problem using. And then some like Julius Caesar were were off limits. Why is Julius Caesar at all off limits for for what? Um, so the fact that you can kind of argue your case and maybe show it, get your way, yeah. You know, uh, uh, th there was also an uh, uh, if maybe a bad precedent. If I Andrew's can, I yell at my computer until it does my thing, <laughs> uh, uh, Andrew, uh, you may or may not be allowed to chime in on this, but uh, uh, there was another case where through a bug. Uh, somebody was talking to chat GPT asking for a dolly image and uh, accidentally the instructions that chat GPT gave to doll E were just plain text explanations prompts. And uh, 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 that was really fascinating. I, that's I, how I don't it works. Know if that's public. But yeah. I mean, the, the, you can get the prompt message. Like I've had, I actually sent a thing about that because when they did an update on it, it just came out really easily for me. I'm like, Hey, just, just so you know, I didn't even ask for it and it did it. They're not the, the prompt messages. So prompt messages, as you don't know, the, those are the instructions they feed to the model before they append whatever you're asking it to do. There's not really an upside in trying to make them super secret and stuff because you can figure out the parameters of what these things do generally without it. If you're hoping that people don't realize you use some keyword or whatever, that's a very weak way to do it. Um, you know, there are ways you can sort of mitigate against revealing the prompt, which is, you know, basically, even if you're using streaming stuff, but it's not like, oh, oh no, they, they know that. And that was some companies thought that those would be proprietary, you know, they would have their others. And I, and I emailed like a couple, you know, people doing stuff when their prompts came out, I'm like, you need to write this differently. And there are ways you can, there are means to make them much harder to, to see because, you know, these systems understand a lot of different forms of data besides pure text and stuff. But at the end of the day, I don't think there's an advantage to trying to keep it a secret. And also like, like what, what, like my, my goal, my personal point of view was like Dolly, these, these things like this, the guardrail should be there to prevent it from accidentally doing something you don't want. If I say I have a disagreement with Bryce, it shouldn't say, well, you should punch Bryce in the face. It shouldn't say that. But if I say, hey, I want to write a workplace comedy about me and Bryce where Bryce and I get into a fight, it should say, okay, yeah, I'll be happy to write that. Um, and that becomes, a, it's a debate. It's not like everybody shares a position where it becomes like, oh, well, should should this thing never tell you how to make, like the example you give is like, should it never tell you how to make mustard gas? Like, okay, well, if I'm going to be cleaning in my house using some household chemicals, should it tell me which ones not to mix? Right. Well, and, and like, you're responsible for the things that you do. Like, I think if it, yeah. if it was lying to you, right? If it was if it was a thing where you look where you asked it and it said mix your bleach and ammonia, it's gonna make everything look double clean. Like that would be that would be something. But in most cases, I think it tends to get information right enough that something like that is public information. It's not dangerous to know that to begin with. And yeah, I can find it in a high school library. Yeah, they made a King of the Hill episode about it. That's how I know it. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> unfortunately, I found out because I was trying to clean up a mess and oh. accidentally mixed some shampoo and some bleach. <laughs> oh, yeah. Don't do that. And so, you know, it, it, it's like the idea of like rogue AIs, you know, getting access to APIs and credit card information. Someone has to program it. Like, if, if what people are worried about is dangerous things, then thankfully we tend to know about who makes these things, who, who, who is responsible. A human is responsible. It's not coming. Yeah. It's not becoming sentient Joker. It's not becoming the E Joker. Yeah. It's a, a, one of my former colleagues had made a comment about how they'd use chat GPT and that said this felt like therapy. And then outraged, people were just outraged, and and it reminded me kind of of a Jordan Peterson joke, which was like somebody, so and so, very upset by Jordan Peterson, could really benefit from reading Jordan Peterson, mm. and and I was like, you know, like yeah, this, you know, this is like people very upset about ideas of AI therapy could maybe use some AI therapy because okay. uh, I think we all have to be 
you know, I, you know, my take, and I think kind of shared here is like, I am very suspicious of expertise because it often becomes unchecked and it just becomes like, oh, well, they're an expert, whatever. And you constantly have to be able to check experts to understand, you know, that this is, you know, a teenage Andrew sitting at home watching an infomercial and sees his doctor pop up and endorse a magnetic back brace. And I'm like, this guy's an idiot. This guy's responsible for my health. And so, you know, ever since I'm like, well, yeah, mm -hmm. just give people the tools, let them decide and just understand. Sometimes we'll make dumb decisions. So uh, yeah. uh, one of the things that happened, I, I guess, uh, almost a week ago was uh, uh, we had a annular eclipse here in Austin. And so we had an event and luckily the skies were totally clear. It was nice and uh, crisp and cool. And on Friday, uh, one week ago today, um, we were cleaning everything up. We we're like, oh, tomorrow it's going to be great. We're going to have a bunch of friends over and then look at the eclipse. And I looked out over this completely cloudless horizon after the sun had already gone down. And I saw uh, a, a very, very bright planet with a bit of a halo around it. And I was like, that is very bright for a planet. And then it, uh, I noticed also it's moving. And I was like, is that a satellite? If that is a satellite, that is the brightest satellite I've ever seen. And also, why is there a cloud around it? There's definitely not a cloud in the sky. And then it kept on moving. And then it did something that I'd never seen before. It blew a smoke ring about three times the size of the sun. And I was like, what is even happening? And then it faded away and went into nothing. And uh, thanks to this very program, I was smart enough to go straight to a computer and ask, did SpaceX launch something today? <laughs> and I found out that what I had witnessed was the first time that they had launched a second uh, set of Starlink satellites in the same day. And uh, I just happened to be in the right spot where when they blew the fairing open and they released the, uh, uh, the Starlink satellites, uh, it, it was unbelievably magical. And I, I, uh, part of me wishes I had caught it on uh, phone video, but the bigger part of me was just glad that I was just fully engaged with what I was seeing. It was truly, truly an excellent experience. It's 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 crazy to think about going from where this was an idea of let's build this like worldwide satellite constellation that's much more denser and whatnot than used anything else before that to that's my backup internet now. You know, I've got you know, the Starlink thing on my roof that connects to that. And every time more of those go up, you know, it's like in theory, uh, gets better. And, you know, they're actually pushing a thing too, is like Starlink to cell phone. Wow. But it, it, what it would be for, uh, you know, like texting and it stuff like that. It would be satellite. This, yeah. It would be, it would be data. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, high but, latency, but, but, uh, yeah, like you know, the, the iPhone does now too with the SOS, which is great. Like that sort of thing. Do you guys have the new iPhone by the way? Well, let's talk. We'll just shit that for after things. I guess we can talk about some stuff. Oh, yeah, I, I don't. Oh. Um, I'm th then you're not allowed, Bryce. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That's, that's the rule. Awkward. Ends the rule. Well, hey, uh, let Let's wrap up the main program and remind everybody to head on over to Patreon.com/slash Weird Things. That's right. where you keep us loud, live, and independent. You get you your own RSS feed, mm -hmm. including access to our uh, uh, After Things podcast, you got which it. we're about to start doing right now. That's right. Uh, make sure you support us. Uh, we've been, uh, uh, we were missing y'all the past few weeks, but we're glad to be back and uh, giving you all the weird things in your life. Thank you for supporting us. Yeah. All the weird things. Uh, over it's been around. weird. It's been weird. It's been weird. God, I want to go back and finish our campaign on that space station. That sounded awesome. <laughs> I, I, we're, we're a very short jump from putting on our quests and being in there and having this thing just evolve the scenario. Like, like take, take everything you've heard, continue this adventure, begin us a new chapter. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, here, I'll, I'll run to the restroom uh, okay. on break. I'll be right back. Uh... Okay, well, we're going to get started here in just a few moments. Uh, Andrew, I, men I mentioned this a bit, but ha had, uh, had, you, had you seen, I know this was on Daring Fireball a bit, about this CAGI uh, uh, search engine, a, pre a paid I, search engine? 
Yeah, I saw that mentioned, and I never signed up for it. It sounds interesting, but it's also one of these things, when I hear paid search engine, I'm like, well, how long before Google adds that capability? Well, uh, I wonder. I mean, the, their whole thing is no ads, no. no. Yeah, no, it's valuable, uh, yeah. Um, but the... I, I really I really do get a lot of use out of that summarizer. That is a really cool thing. Um, yeah, I just have other places I use with I, like I, I'll do that within Chat GPT and whatnot. So it's like, yeah, um, it's kind of it's kind of like the the Hey email that I've got, which mm -hmm. I realize I've had I've had for a couple of years now, um, where uh, you can train you can train Kagi to say like, okay, these domains raise these up, show me less of these, block Pinterest, don't give me Pinterest results. And you can make different um, different filters that have different focuses. Um, but I, I, I think there's like some, there, it feels like there's going to be some amount of training to it because sometimes you get really good results. Sometimes you get really like, oh, I, I feel like I might not have not found about this website or seen this result on Google. And then sometimes it's like, Oh, this is not right by a by a whole mile. This is way off, and it's not close. Yeah, it's interesting. Like in their model, five dollars for three hundred searches, ten dollars a month for this. They have a free tier to try it with. You know, it's a very it's a it's. There's been a couple. Um, what's the other paid search engine? Um, uh, not DuckDuckGo. No, um, um, they were really uh, paid search engine. Oh. Man, it sucks. I can't remember the other uh, the name of it because it was. I've actually talked to the Theo. Uh, For, oh, uh, ad roll, sir. Oh, yeah, I don't know. Turns out, turns out if you type in paid search engine. You, you.com, you.com. You, mu? You, you.com. You? Like. Y O U, you, you like Brian. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. There's a lot of there's a lot of weird tech stuff going on. I thought you had heard about this. This was, yeah, one of the yeah. big ones early on. So I built in GPT 4 and a lot of other stuff in there. Oh, wow. Oh. Uh, help me find great. Food around the horseshoe, Las Vegas. <laughs> Somebody's ready. <laughs> no reason. <laughs> oh, okay. Johnny Rockets. Oh, I love me some Johnny Rockets. Sabaro. Guy Fieri. Oh yeah, there's a Guy Fieri place at the at the hotel. Okay. Anyway. Well, that's neat. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like I have an, I've I have enjoyed. And generally had a good, a net positive out of paying a hundred dollars a year for this email app service. I feel like I've saved time and gotten functionality and productivity out of it. Maybe we can talk about that because it's been a while. I talk, I talked about starting using it on this show a few years ago. So stuff that. Yeah, I, I, I asked you to give me a summary of the latest episode of Lower Decks. Okay. What do we got? And, well, I don't know if this is actually an episode. I'm curious. I'm like, like uh... yeah, it completely made this up. <laughs> oh, it's hallucinating? Yeah. I'm like, I go, hey, write a summary of the latest episode of Lower Decks. And the latest episode of Lower Decks titled A Stellar Adventure. I'm like, well, that sounds like a made-up model description of a name of an episode for a sci-fi show and not an actual one. So let me go to, let's go to Bing on ChatGPT. Um, we're doing it. We're looking at a close up here of uh, Brian making a shiv. I am. Uh, sorry, I, I uh, we were about to That's talk. That's a pen cap. To, uh, yeah, it's a pen cap. Uh, we were talking about phones, and uh, I was about to admit that I'm about to buy a new phone simply because my current phone is very quiet, but 
then I thought, yeah, but you know why it's quiet. It's quiet because it's filled with pocket lint in the speakers. And then uh, uh-huh. I've, I'm, I'm attempting to make a shiv that will not harm the speakers, but I could dig out lint. Okay. I'm <laughs> glad we're all caught up on this one. Lovely. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, uh, uh, the you.com yeah. uh their 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 react their response completely bullshit it literally some just made up a whole fake episode where i go to chat gpt and it gives me an accurate subscription of the latest episode okay yeah uh got him don't yeah. pay for, well, don't pay for just, that no yeah, yeah sorry I you.com I, I mean it's uh it's definitely neat that everyone that there are different uh different levels of integration of this stuff um and seeing seeing things like this like that is uh a criterion for for folks is how much recent data can you give it how much what library of data um hey speaking of data you want to uh yeah you want to after some data you you want to create some in the form of a podcast what about you with yeah. joe all right i'll count you in for the after things podcast in three tit. Hello and welcome to the After Things Podcast. I'm Andrew Main, joined by Brian Brushwood. Oh, hello, friend. I'm just whittling a, a pen stick here. And Mr. Bryce Castillo. Well, I'm the button up clean guy. Right, now get your get your whittling shavings off of my podcast surfaces. Oh, oh you I, I I'm sorry. <laughs> I will. No, no, it's, yeah, we're just doing just riffing here for some comedy here in the After Things program. Hi, Andrew Maine. Welcome. So I got the new iPhone. Oh, and okay. I would say that this is the happiest I've been with an update in maybe like a couple of years, a few years. Um and the 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 reason is that it's uh, I just returned my old one, but it's it's a little bit lighter. It's appreciably lighter. You pick this thing up, it's not like ah, oh, it's it's just wafer thin, but it is appreciably lighter. You pick it up. The form factor. They did a thing here where uh, the the screen is much closer to the edge, mm-hmm. so you feel like you get more screen. I haven't put it in a case yet because it actually feels really nice to sort of hold on to. Um, I've been, you know, I'm very curious to try that. The, one of the reasons I wanted to get it is being a VR nerd and stuff. Is it with the update, it's going to be able to shoot 3D video with these two cameras here. And so I'm very anxious to try doing that to see what that'll be like. And, so, uh, and the update has not already happened, but it's incoming and it'll go to that phone first. I think it's only going to go to the phone. I think those cameras are the only ones that can handle it because I think that they both have to have a same, uh, the, be able to have this match the same lens thing. Yeah, I, 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 I never thought I would be this guy, but this is the longest I've ever gone without buying a new iPhone. I think this is a four-year-old iPhone. And the only thing I'm upset about it uh, is uh, that it's quiet. And, and that's why I am whittling a pen cap to make a shiv that allows me to clear out some of the lint in the speakers okay. um uh outside of a longer battery life a uh, faster processor and a better camera is is, uh, is there anything else under the sun i mean <laughs> that's the that is the iphone story i would say that the, the lighter being lighter is is really it, I do appreciate the fact that, you know, like the, particularly if you use the Pro Max, is that like you're, you know, it's a big, big beast to hold on to. You know, the speed of the processor, I mean, it's just, there's just no lag. There's just nothing, you know, it's just, it's just such an amazing sort of feature there. But, you know, we're, we're, we're in a great point where like, I'm not like, ah, oh, you got to get an iPhone or you got to get this or whatever. Like the people, like Android people feel like it's like you're insulting them if you tell them like, yeah, I have an iPhone. And they'd be like, I have an Android. Like, cool, I have, have a have a phone, I have an Android right here. You know, I, 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 every, you know, I don't buy Android phones as often as I buy iPhones, but I buy them. You're not on the stand right now, Andrew. You're good. Yeah. <laughs> we all agree with you. <laughs> that's, 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 that's what that, okay. N- not, this is not a you thing. Like that's the form that the, these freaking phone wars take now is like, who can not be phone warring the most? I'm going to be honest, Bryce. 
iPhone users don't care what you say. Android people get really upset if you don't mention Android. It's gotten better, but it is it is not it's not the iPhone users that write any angry. You're ignoring my platform, and I have like like it's you know, the end. You know, it's like oh look, iPhone got USB C. Fine. Okay, let's go back to why did they not use USB C? Because back when they had the Lightning port, which was the hey, fastest Brian? port available, USB C wasn't a standard yet. USB C, hey. and they made a decision: should they wait that long? I don't know, but they had the fastest transfer for like a couple of years until USB-C got standard. <laughs> We're live at the line of the front phone walls. No, I'm saying, but the point the, is... A, the anti-ironic phone wall frontier has taken over the west the coast of the United... Both, Bryce. I own both, <laughs> and I can tell you what I like about both, and I can tell you what get to be sort of the, the silly sort of thing. They're chanting, this. I've got both here on the front lines. <laughs> Bryce, it's a it's a mat. <laughs> this is a great ice scraper, by the way. You get ice in <laughs> car like this thing. You need to need to scrape. You want to peel some wallpaper? This sharp edge on my and your pixel. You know, yeah, my pixel is like it's this is this is the thing. I got the pixel. I'm like, you can't be serious that this is like this sharp, weird edge thing here. Because I think I mean, like I think they do a lot of cool stuff on the pixel, mm -hmm. like a lot of cool stuff. Yeah, um, and it's... talking about platform wars, are you? <laughs> I've seen my time or two. One time, I signed up with the TurboGrafx 16 up against yeah. the Genesis generation. Oh, geez. Yeah. I think I think the folds that will be the phone of the future once they can actually make them and make them reliable. They're going to be, you know. I think every phone in the future is probably going to be a folding phone because those are damn cool. You know, uh, they, they, they are. And, and they've already hit the good enough level where it's like, uh, yes, it's never going to be a perfectly flat screen right now, but, but it's close enough where it's like when, when somebody opens up their phone, I'm like, Oh, that is big and easy to see. Well, and, and yeah, yeah. right now it's like the tablet, the tablet software ecosystem is not great on android the, the way like the ipad ecosystem is pretty solid on ios it's very great yeah uh, to to the the rumor is now that uh apple is working on the foldable device that apple's working on will be an ipad before they work on or release an iphone that is foldable um presumably hmm. there's more space to work on on those fringes and because uh this is rumors and reports that because the iPad audience is smaller, there's less chance of volatility if a foldable iPad is a mess up like some of the early foldable phones were. So uh, uh, I, one of the things we've talked about before is the idea that Apple is maybe aiming for a device list. Like, like right now we have the supercomputer that sits in our pocket the thing on our wrist that we can easily glance at, we're looking at the thing that will strap to our face um, that'll allow us to just wave our hands and get everything we want. Um, do, do we ever see a time that the thing in your pocket goes away? Because I personally would, I think I'd legit be sad. Now, now like I've, I've, I'm already surprised uh. at like, I bother to bring my laptop when I go on the road and I keep never touching it. I keep being able to accomplish everything I want to accomplish just on my phone. Um, uh -huh. But but it's it's hard for me to picture a world where the thing where, in my pocket goes away. Where the thing that you don't, yeah. I mean, that you you described a world where that is not likely to. Oh, happen. I'm aware. You've, I just checkmated myself. You've just asked a question of asking anyone else to challenge <laughs> your. That's the opposite of the Socratic method, I think. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I I I haven't been. I went on a trip and I forgot to forgot to find pull out my charger, so I haven't had my 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 Apple Watch on for like a week, two weeks, which is as long as Ooh. I've done without it. But because it had cellular, I felt comfortable just walking around with that and no phone. Because if I needed to, I had my Apple Watch. I don't like the display. I don't like the controls. I don't like a lot. I like the hardware a lot. I don't like, and they know that the UI is still evolving. But I do think a wrist thing or something that if I know if I fall down, I can press a button and get help is kind of seems cool to me. Yeah. Uh, my phone is, I work from home most of the time. So my phone is always, it's maybe near me or it could be in another room. I'm not as attached to my phone. I'm, I, I spend way more time on my iPad than I do my phone. Um, I also use uh, an iPad with a stylus, which is a game changer. Yeah. Um, 
the amount of writing that I do and sketching on there is, is, is huge. But yeah, I think Apple Apple's going through that interesting whole ecosystem. What's really fascinating is uh, I just pushed out an app for, they'll talk about later on, but as an Apple developer, they're pushing how much they're pushing Apple Vision. And one of the things that makes Apple Vision really interesting is the idea that it will work with your existing iPad apps. Right. That, and, and that, like how they're doing with the, with, they're pushing those apps on Mac OS as well. Mm -hmm. If you've got an iPad. So like I had to, yeah. I had to, I developed an app extension and I went through and developed it for iOS. I'm like, ah, oh, now I got to go through the trouble developing for Mac. And it's like, oh no, it's in the Apple, it's in the iOS, excuse me, in the Mac OS store. You can just, you can just download it and it'll just tell people like, yeah, this is designed for iPad, but it'll work here. And it's like, oh shoot. Like I forget that. I forget like how much of that extensibility is there. Yeah, it'll be, uh, it'll be exciting to see what a lot of the, especially this app portability. Like I'm, I'm, I'm looking at getting a new computer in the in the short term, and I'm thinking of getting a Mac because I've got that MacBook Air, and I've got a lot of, I, I've got my little programs, and Adobe stuff's been updated. The those chips are good if you get a good chip. Like uh, there's, you know, they've got. Well, they're the fastest. They're like the and, and for the. The my I'm a Kool-Aid drinker, so I'll, I'll play that. But I would say that I feel justified. The setup that I went to now is I have a MacBook Pro plugged into a dock, and I'm using my monitor. I was I was I always loved iMacs. I was hoping for a bigger screen iMac. If they'd had a wider screen iMac, I would have bought it. And I'm so glad I didn't now because my computer is my laptop, which is an overpowered laptop that's got amazing battery life. The, the battery life, like I've had friends with like Windows PCs. And like they're always looking for cords to plug in. I'm like, I, I'll take mine on a trip and never charge it, yeah. Because the battery life is phenomenal. But like, it's such a great thing. So I have this dock here that I just slide it into, and it connects to the big monitor. And if I go on a trip, I don't have to unplug anything because I just slide out of the dock, put it in my bag, and I run. And there's my computer. And so I'm not worried about file jumps and you know using time machine to back everything up. So it's been a great solution. Yeah, I uh, a, a a corollary to that or a parallel would be uh, my increasing uh, comfort with just everything's in the cloud. Like, I, I don't really care what device it is. Can I go to Google? Can I say, my things, please? And then they're there, uh, no matter what computer it is. There is a tedious amount of two-factor authentic uh, authentication and so on. But, uh, but it's almost as though the computer itself, like, I, I kind of almost feel like I don't have a computer. I simply exist mostly in the cloud at this point yeah yeah well and i i you know i presumably if i'm going to put more money down into a computer you know it does need to be able to do editing um and because i'm coming from such a weird delta from either the base like m1 macbook air which is like a good chip in like a cheap laptop or my almost decade old uh, desktop PC, it's like you kind of it's gonna it's gonna be hard to miss uh, with whatever because everything will probably be a pretty good upgrade from uh, uh, from more reliable. Yeah, I think we're we're in a good place all around. You know, Google announced that they're going to maintain updates for the pixels for something like five years or something like a really long period of time, which I hope they do. I hope they do that, but remember they did the pixel upgrade plan when they just canceled it, you know, less than right at the point everybody's going to be able to upgrade. So. I mean, I, what, that, that's one of those things where like uh, economics brains turns on and I'm, and I ask myself, what is their incentive to actually follow through on that promise? And I don't know what it is. It would uh, not have, it would be not having that reputation of being a company that is not got stuff that's not a moving target. Oh no, I, yeah. Hey, no, I get it. It's, <laughs> Yeah, they can they can dig deeper. They can <laughs> dig deeper. Um. It's it's a and it's they know and and that's a crazy like they are an incredibly innovative company. So I don't want anybody to feel like oh I'm going to be bashing on them or whatever. And and then I, I can go on about things that Apple's frustrated me like hey, tell me again why this John Stewart show may have got uh, canceled. Uh, look, I want more details on that. But uh, you heard about this price? Uh, uh, yes. Uh, 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 I I have not heard uh, about this story. Well, allegedly, and I say allegedly because, again, as we've seen, news comes out, and then you find out there's another side to it, but Jon Stewart has a show on Apple TV, and then they decided that they're not going to keep doing it because he, he 
he and him reached an agreement to longer do the show because he had an episode where they were going to talk about uh, AI in China. And I can tell you which one of those is a more bigger concern for Apple. <laughs> it has the words AI in it, but also CH in it. Yeah. Uh, and so that's the, hey, Apple, that's the, you want to make programming and you want to be in bed with China in a huge way, you know, and you also want to be a virtue symbol to the rest of the world. You got to think closely about your partners. If you find yourself censoring yourself, even though something may be right or wrong, may be right. So, so uh, if, if I'm reading between the lines, it sounds like he wanted to do kind of a, a takedown of the boss uh, that he was employed. By. Or they something just China. I think they think it, I don't know. I get. I don't. I'm speaking from bleeding. But apparently, they had an episode where the two topics were AI in China, and then I think Apple will probably have a bigger contention about given some of their content about AI stuff, I think it'd be more about China. And I think that like, yeah, they were Apple's like, oh shoot, China's gonna be upset with this. If this, cause like AI is not gonna do anything to them. You know, <laughs> not like Skynet's gonna come after them for being critical, but uh, China will, you know, shut down all their stores and their manufacturing. And Maybe. You know, that, that's the thing that makes me anxious about Twitter is that I think Elon for the most part has good intentions in mind. He's also been a, an apologist for China and said stupid things about Taiwan. And that concerns me about like, you know, the guy, the world's richest man controls Twitter. And also, uh, it's very afraid of the Chinese. Yeah, I, I don't know. I have a good bit of skepticism that it's directly an editorial killing of that show because of, of a China episode. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Could be that uh, it's a I, bad uh, show that nobody watched. Uh, I mean, uh, let's read the reports because I mean, it was not. It was literally, apparently, there was they did not want to do this episode. Stewart said, "Okay, I'm not doing the show." Not that it was canceled. It was I, Stewart I, made the decision. I believe that there are reports. I, I don't know. I, 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 I yeah. I wonder. I, I. So you're skeptical that a large company with heavy involvement in China might tell people, I, "Hey, back off on talking about China," because I mean, we don't it, know anybody personally that's ever happened to. N no, but if you're saying I need to definitely believe that is exactly what happened, then I'm going to ask. That's not what I that, said about Bryce. No, no but you're asking. I'm I'm just trying to be generally generally skeptical here, and I'm not trying to put it up to a lot of specific <laughs> intricate. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't examining. know. I'm just saying that that, 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 it, that I, 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 I I found it like you thought you were skeptical that Apple would be hesitant towards canceling something because it was offensive to China. That's what I thought. I thought you're, you're, you're I am, yes, I'm saying shit. that I'm saying like, it is plausible that I think that this rumor is not the real motivation behind it. I think there could be many, there can be other things. It could it, beyond uh, that. The, the rumor could be the excuse for unrelated behind the scenes reasons. You know, is what you're saying. Uh, I, 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 I don't disagree that it is a, that China very much could also have been it. But they they ordered a John Oliver like show. I think they also expected that they would get something here, and they, uh, I don't know, I, 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 a broad skepticism all around. I say. Yeah, I would invite you to to read it where it wasn't a matter of the show being canceled. Literally, they came to do an episode, and it was Stewart said, "If you're, it was Stewart basically had sold them. If you're not going to do this, then we're not going to do the show." Hmm. It sounds it sounds settled then. No, it's not. I'm I'm just trying to give you more context here, <laughs> Bryce. I'm not trying to argue yeah, with you. But I'm it, just trying to give you more context sure. on what was said. And, and and I'm not in a position to, to to read more into that, but I am excited to see what that actually looks like. Um with if I give it a little more of an examination. So uh w w when is the new uh iPhone gonna have magic three D vision? Yeah. Uh soon. And I, let me just give you one more context. New York Times, which obviously could, reported that Stewart informed his staff on Thursday that Apple pushed back on topics relating to China and artificial intelligence. That's that's the full thing. That's all we know is an alleged and alleged alleged. Just want to give you that thread. It's not. It's been a thing that's covered, and all all the entertainment blogs are covering that, and they're saying that this is what happened on Thursday in the staff meeting. That Stewart told it could be, could be, it could be. No, they don't want to renew, but I'm going to tell them because the push could be this. But I just want you to have that added context. It's not like oh, I heard a rumor. This like literally, it's like. Insiders have said this has happened. We're going to hear more. We'll find out more. We'll find out what the real state is. But this would not be the first time, as we know, a big media company or company is pushed back because of this. Well, like I said, we know okay. people personally who were shut down because of. Okay, please. I'm not arguing about this. Okay. Bryce, I'm not. I know. I believe you, and I, I get it. I get it. I get it. Sorry. I gotcha.
No, it's all good. No, I, I mean, I, I guess I, my, to the point that I like, I'm not putting up any other things I'm not, here. I'm not, I'm not talking. I would say that that my 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 the thing why I get emotional about this is that China is a bad actor. The U.S. Is a bad actor, but China does really bad things, and there is a hesitancy to criticize this or to do that. And I made a decision several years ago to stop doing business with China, and I've been offered stuff, theme park design stuff like this, and I just could not with a conscience do this. And I see, and I'm not, and Bryce has nothing to do, but I see this sort of, it frustrates me because I see corporate entities that will defend really, really egregious bad behavior for the sake of business and then go on some horse about some other morality sort of thing and say, oh, we're a moral company. And to me, it's, I'm just, it's not you, Bryce. It's just like, I get frustrated by this where, you know, Apple, which I love the company, I'm an sure. investor in, but they'll do this campaign about, oh, we're trying to prove the world and this and sourcing our things and stuff. It's like, okay. Let's talk about China. No, we're not going to talk about China. It's like, all right, guys, you well, have sure, no it just, moral standards. It just seems like uh, 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 my skepticism is not appropriate uh, from the responses. So I'm down to take whatever level of of I don't, again of, I don't, of skepticism I don't, think you think is warranted to, to, on China because I just I don't feel like an expert and I obviously don't know enough about the story to say I don't know what, again Bryce it could be like Stewart is a guy that could be I I don't I'm not again, I'm not talking about you I'm just talking about like why I get emotional about this because it's just it's it's a frustrating thing for me where people who be very much into human rights and stuff. And then you say actors and stuff we can name who talk about like, let's talk about Tibet. Let's talk about this. Uh, I'd rather not. Like, okay, I, why not? Oh, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't mind. I mean, since, since we're here now anyway, um, I wouldn't mind hearing a little bit more about your personal experience. Cause you, you went to China to teach magic stuff, right? Yeah. I was invited by the Beijing circus. I had, I had a wonderful experience. The people there were amazing. They're absolutely great. But I also saw really disturbing things there where, uh, you know, I watched a person who was, was we're in a, uh, doing a, in a talk where you have some Chinese party members there or whatever, and a woman from Hong Kong was, who helped organize this, wanted to address one of the problems, which was Chinese piracy, because you talked about the magic dealer room and how like all the things or all the magic things there were just ripped off from people elsewhere, Koreans and other people. And that like, China didn't care that all that was pirated stuff. And she's saying, you're not going to have a thriving creative community in China if everything's going to get stolen or it's going to be theft or whatever. And then I watched as one of the party adjacents turn, tried to find a sympathetic American and said like, hey, could you say some nice things about China? And I watched this guy act, play out the role of the useful idiot and be like, well, here's what I think is great and blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, wow, like this is a stupid magic convention I'm watching this. And then I had uh, a friend that I made there who was as apolitical, like their children, their young people are taught to be completely apolitical. Like they will argue about their mayor. They will argue about the mayor. They'll argue about traffic congestion, but there's a certain point at which they do not cross and she was extremely apolitical. And she was texting me, she says she was frustrated. She goes, they deleted, I think it was why one of the posts, like they just deleted my post. I go, what do you mean? They deleted it. I go, well, what did you say? She said, I complained that the subway was running late. And, and I watched like those little levels of insertions. You cannot freaking complain that the subway was running late really without them coming in and deleting a post for a person who wasn't this kind of an activist sort of thing. And you just you would just see that sort of stuff just pervasively and it just got worse. There was a point back in late aughts, you could have, there was a hopeful path for China and then it just went down this very, very, very bad path. And a lot of companies that invested heavily in there were hopeful for the, the broader, the idea that China would open up and it didn't, but they're still invested there. They're still tied to it. And it is a, a, a it's a scary situation because they're economically very dependent upon it. But well, and, and anyhow. We, we, we saw one of the most curious incidents from where I was standing is uh, like, uh, I don't know, back to back, we had both the NBA and Blizzard Activision uh, essentially enforcing, uh, 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 diktats from China because they didn't want to lose their access to, to China, which, which yeah. is, was very, uh, that was a very strange moment to, to see. And, and I've not seen much of that since then, but it sounds like a lot of that has, has, uh, de deeply affected you. People go out of their way to not criticize or be critical of them, which is their major global power in an economy, but because of business, because of, you know, like remember the Top Gun Maverick jacket, it had a Taiwan thing. So they removed it, you know, it got pulled out. And, and but you get other ways of where people just, you don't hear about a combat conflict because people just, no, don't go there. Don't, don't even talk about it. Don't even do that. And like I said, I, 
Dan, I remember taking your absolute price. We don't know anything about the accuracy of this, whatever. And I'm not saying you're saying it's not true or anything like that. We don't know anything about this. But it is this sort of alarming kind of thing where you think about like, well, there has been a pattern where big media companies and, com and companies in general will just avoid any criticism of China. And that, hmm. that concerns me. So uh, uh, if I remember correctly, uh, at the time, uh, and, and forgive me if I'm talking out of school, we can delete any of this, but, uh, but, but you, you seemed fairly optimistic uh, upon returning from China, uh, saying that the young people, you know, they understand how to use a VPN and, and get access to real information. I, are, are, you less, are you less optimistic now? Well, uh, okay. yeah, I mean, I mean that what happened was that started getting to be you, 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 a lot of them kind of got started to get more isolated, cut off. Some of them are still, still there. And they're also, there is, there is the, the, you know, remember, remember the ones I'm talking to are not your average Chinese. I'm talking to every kid that I knew, every young person I knew in their twenties, their parents were connected and wealthy and members of the party, whatever. And so there's the elite. The elite still have it pretty damn good and whatnot. And they kind of have their little freedoms and stuff. And they know just stay in your lane, you'll be fine. You know, what, what will happen, you know, after Xi or whatever, you know, Xi has been cracking down left and right. And Xi is a hard liner. Xi is a communist and he is a, you know, in a totalitarian sort of person. And so at that point, it wasn't clear the direction he was going to go. And then it kind of went to like, well, that's where he went. And so that has been the trajectory. So, so uh, it, uh, it, it, it sounds like, <laughs> uh, it sounds like there's not an easy work around the getting real information fix anymore. <laughs> I, I I think that we need to shout louder when we see that, you know, like I said, my, my I, people, I buy products all the time from China. I, I do business with China. Like, I'm not talking about like, oh, we need to divest or whatever. I mean, a little bit, it might be bad. My, my, my frustration comes from sort of the hypocrisy. Like, I love Apple, but I watched this, the latest keynote, and I watched this big thing about environmental pledge and sourcing labor and do this about, hey, we care about the world. It's like, okay, cool. You're in bed with people that, and like, hey, like, oh, U.S. says yes, we do bad things, and I can read about them all over the newspapers because we can talk about it. And you're, in, they're in bed with a country that may, may, and I do not have confirmation that, but may be dictating their editorial content now. Yeah. That's scary. Where, where does that extend to? Apple has a news feed. You know, are they going to sort of modify their news feed to sort of say like, hey, like, let's not do as much this. Let's let's not focus our coverage here. Let's do this. So, so the sure. biggest fear with Apple would be that, um, uh, uh, despite the, their, their bravery of, of, of standing up for, uh, you know, they, they announced that they would not hack one of their own devices for the FBI for, uh, in a domestic case. Meanwhile, maybe they're, they're, uh, uh, more liberally, uh, flexible when it comes to a foreign power. Well, I can imagine for Apple, Yes, they are making money off of services at the moment, a good deal of money off of services. But we also know that they make money on hardware and the services that that hardware comes along with. And we've heard reports of their meddling, of meddling within the Apple TV ecosystem because executives want it to be family friendly, want it to be stuff that is, uh, I think at the time, network safe uh, uh, types of, of media. And... John, like John Stewart's show, is not that is not is more of like a a John Oliver thing, which is a, a pretty pointed political message, which is tough for Apple because it's in such a a a, 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 a weird spot. So I I I see it as like a sanitizing. Uh, I, I totally see it as a, a potential sanitizing play because. If you're if you're Apple, just say uh, you know what? Maybe we'll just keep on the safe stuff. We'll just get you'll just keep doing Charlie Brown and and the peanuts, and we'll 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 let you do the hard hitting uh, international geopolitics. Conference. Yeah, right. and I think that like with any org, there's a lot of camps in there. I think that the the people that greenlit John Ken, and again, I I, I I'm not accused. I didn't mean to sound like I was accusing you for not taking things <laughs> literally or what. It was not my intention. It was, yeah, it yeah, was but it was it was that there are people that the people that green that that show like yes we want to show we truth to power is great whatever then there's other people going there's and it might be you know the the, the you know the, the heads are like you yeah, know no we're really involved in china guys we can't do this and like well we want to have autonomy to do this and i guarantee you that yeah, it could be and i don't want to go off and you know being like they're, they're taking it for true but 
we've seen historically in the past, though, is there's some camps that are like, hey, let's do this, then other camps that go, whoa, you can't. And then internally, there's a disagreement. But yeah, I mean, the yeah. Apple that, that stood up to the government and said, we're not going to hack our own phone, I respect that a lot. And I think there's a lot of that still there, but there's still... I, my, and, my criticism and, on, like, and on a galactic scale, Apple standing up for China in this moment beyond the John Stewart show, so, show is probably not, it doesn't even move the needle as much as that backdoor stuff. I, yeah, I mean, you know. I'm like, and, and, and my, if it is true, I'm like, don't even do news shows. Don't even do that. If, if you can't, if you're, if, if, cause I, as a consumer, you should be telling me, by the way, here are the topics we will not be covering because of who we are. You need to tell me this, you know, because otherwise the truth to power shows would frustrate me because you would watch how selective they would be about that. And at first they're exciting. And then you're like, man, you keep avoiding this other thing. And then, uh -huh. so. and remember too, thing about John Stewart, this was the guy that went on Colbert and talked, said flat out that, you know, COVID came from, <laughs> from the Wuhan virus facility. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which makes me think there might have already been some nervous, some anxiety at Apple to begin with about the idea of like, well, I already did this. And so. That's interesting. Um, hey, uh, uh, do we have any productivity picks or picks of any kind? Uh, I'll I'll share I'll share mine. I talked about this a little bit uh, within within the show, um, but I've been trying out this uh, uh, Kagi search, uh, K A G I search. The idea is that it's what if uh, what if you just paid for a good search engine? Would you pay for a good search engine? Oh my God! So the, it's not ad supported. It's, it's not just... ad. It, you know, nope, nope. It's not ad supported. Um, it uh, doesn't track you. It doesn't. At the moment, you can't even turn on a search history. Um, oh, that's wonderful. Um, but I will say, like, uh, give me. I don't know. Give me something to search. That's the thing is, I don't know what to search now. Uh, 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 search um, uh, 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 history uh, of fire eating. Oh yeah, here. Things to search for. History of fire eating. Um, and so you get the Wikipedia for fire eating. You get uh, the human marbles. Hey, you get Houdini's well, history of, hey. of fire hey, eating. All right. I already love it. That's uh, our YouTube <laughs> Look video. at all that Brian Brushwood. <laughs> uh, bitch Media, Penn Jillette, the Fire Eaters, um, uh, Trump story, I think. National. <laughs> and so the idea being like, okay, like, hey, what what is this story? I don't know. Meet the Fire Eaters. Let me uh, summarize this for me. And so they have their universal summarizer built in where you give it a link to an article or a page and it reads it and sometimes it takes a second and it just bullet points the thing for you. Um, oh, that's tasty. And and it's it's the sort of thing where I, I generally trust the things that it says. The other cool thing about this, if you're really wanting to dive deep, is you can click this discuss this document button. And what, what would you think discuss this document does? Take you like a comment? You, lead, leads you to a cesspool of other humans? Takes you like a comment thread? No, it spins up a chat bot for you and it talks and it can talk to you. Oh. What is the opposing view of this article? Uh, that's that's a, that's one I've done. Like, I, 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 oh, you know what? Uh, uh, let, uh, I, Here we go. Uh, the article does not explicitly discuss opposing views. However, some could be criticisms of comparisons, defensive policies, downplaying of rhetoric. But you know, like I, I think there's a there's a there's a really cool thing here, and I'm starting. I'm just I'm figuring it out. It's it's not like a, you know, I've talked about like paste before. You know, having a having a clipboard manager. I think anybody could use that. I don't know that Kagi is a thing yet for everyone, but with as often as I search stuff. Even just here in the shows, like having search that you can really customize, having a summarizer there, uh, like I think I think there's something really interesting if you do searching, very particular. So Kagi, uh, they have a they have a free thing. I'm on the free thing. Just get a free hundred searches, free hundred uh, AI stuff. But once you start paying, it's it gets unlimited. Their new thing is unlimited, ten dollars a month, unlimited. Uh, uh, my pick is, uh, 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 I can't believe I'm saying this, uh, uh -oh. paying for my sources of news. Um, the economist has a number of wonderful podcasts. Some of them are like daily summaries of the news headlines. Then there's a weekly digest, but on top of that, they have money talks. They have, uh, uh, Babbage and, and, uh, you know, talking about technology and all that stuff. And they're about to take all of their premium programming behind the paywall 
And so uh, I believe if you go search The Economist Plus or something like that, but but like for two bucks a month, you get all of those uh, excellent, excellent programs. And, and I trust The Economist and it's nice to have new sources that I trust, you know, and I do make a habit because I want to have a, a varied diet. I, I pay for the Wall Street Journal now. I pay for the New York Times and I make sure to read both. Um, uh, it's a... Uh, I, I, I'm into paying for my news because my news is what my brain becomes made of. And uh, I, I, I think it's worth spending money on. Nice. Now, this looks like a subscription just to their podcast products. I don't. Do, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, it comes free. If you subscribe to the magazine, you get all of this free. Oh, okay. But, or you but, can just get yeah. the. Po- okay, uh, interesting. And, and, and I'll vouch for like uh, the 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 prince is all about uh, uh, Xi, Xi Jinping. Uh, it's it's very very good. Uh, all all of their stuff is very very good. Yeah, I, yeah. I like it a lot. The Economist. And I got two picks here. Pick it up. Um, pick it up. Pick it up. Uh, Man, uh, if you guys, there's a YouTube channel uh, I found at random called The Curiosity Show. Oh, yeah. Uh, 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 back from the 1970s and 80s or whatever. Yeah, it's an Australian show that's yeah. got all these little fun little, you know, I imagine if Brian Brushard was a time traveler who found himself in the outback in the late 1970s. Uh, uh, you, know you know what? Know? Maybe Brian Brushwood, as a time traveler five years ago, found some pretty good episodes in there. Yeah. Yeah, they've got hundreds and hundreds. Of, they're just little like you know, like how to how to make a coin and tell which side is up or not. It's not the production value of you know a scam school or you know, uh, which only makes it road, more adorable. But, yeah, but it is you know some Aussies showing you really cool science stunts and stuff like this. So uh, that's my pick for one. And the other pick is like uh, I just watched this one about the Ring Illusion. Um, remember that from Superman? Um, <clears throat> I. Uh, you heard about the Sam Bankman Freed? <laughs> I've heard of that SBF. guy. Yeah. Yeah. I hear he's yeah. a real piece of crap. I hear. <laughs> well, not everybody would agree with you, Bryce. Oh. Tell me more. Uh uh I I have not read the book, but oh. you know, Michael Lewis has a book about FTX about Sam Bankman Freed, and he started talking to Sam Bankman Freed when Sam Bankman Freed was, you know, the wonder kid who was gonna solve, you know, the economy and do all this sort of stuff. And then everything fell apart. And then Michael Lewis wrote this book that some people are taking exception to because it's kind of an apology, apologist. It's sort of a very big defense of SBF. And, and Michael Lewis has gone on talk shows and stuff and says, I want this to be a letter to the jury so they can, you know, understand what he's really doing. And, 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 and Michael Lewis has said some stuff, I'm paraphrasing, kind of like, well, he didn't really do anything if, if if you know it was more of a run on the bank that caused the problem and stuff and whatnot and so it's been causing some issues and so coffeezilla uh who is an amazing youtuber who does really good trick takedowns of crypto and whatnot he did a whole piece where he kind of took down michael lewis's book i like michael lewis's writing and stuff but you know it is it is a thing where you find out kind of the backstory of like lewis had a friend who was you know was one of the subjects of flash boys and you got to meet sam bankman freed and Lewis went to go meet Sam Bankman Freed and was taken in and was, you know, thought he's really sincere and whatnot. And I, you know, uh, I'd always, you know, I, when FDX came on my radar, I remember I just saw like, S- I saw Sam Bankman Freed's like face plastered all over, you know, like, you know, in posters and stuff and SF. And that's always a warning sign for me when the CEO of a company is spending an immense amount of effort to sort of push their name out there. Like, I was like, I'm like, I don't know who this is, but I'm sus. Vicious, you right. know, and then you hear it's FDX's crypto, and I'm like, well, there, I'm like, well, I'm, I want nothing to do with that because that's just a bunch of whatever it is. But <laughs> what was it? I, 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 without any specifics, I remember you telling me, Brian, whenever I'm in a social gathering, there are two things that trigger very loud alarm bells. One is when anybody makes even the most casual joke, obliquely or not, about meth, and the other is when they talk about crypto. <laughs> no. I don't know if that was me, but uh, I I don't I, won't, I feel like but I, I relate. I really yeah. I I have a thing where I would get asked like, hey, can you talk to a startup about AI? I'm like, is crypto in their business plan? <laughs> you know, and 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 I'm like, well, you know, like oh, we're doing a thing for kids, a game thing for kids, powered by crypto. Like, yeah, because kids have you know Ether wallets. Like they're they're like they're totally into that, and it's just. And then I, you know, and I and I understand. I, I don't fault people, and I think like, I'm a believer in the the. the 
the the overall idea. But anyhow, uh, anyhow, the point was CoffeeZilla, who does great takedowns, did a takedown of Michael Lewis, and you kind of realize like, ooh, this does not look good for Lewis. Yeah, I might uh, I might check this out uh, right now. There we go. Check out CoffeeZilla yeah. on YouTube. Yep. Cool, gentlemen. It's been after. Hey, that's a show. So, Bryce, feel free to edit anything you want. Make it more efficient and clean. Feel free or I not. I, 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 we're good. No, we're I good. Feel like we're really, we landed the plane. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm fine. Whatever. I, I, I said what I said. So, I'm not yeah. Gonna... No, we're good. And and we talked we talked it out, and I think in a good way. Um. All right. Well, here's. I something. definitely stopped uh, scraping out lint out of my phone. I'm like, oh, something's happening over here. <laughs> <laughs> We should, oh, every show, we should have a label. This show is a re this is a, a dramatic <laughs> interpretation. Of- All of the actors have agreed to their, to their performance. Well, I, just, I just want to go back to playing the, the space adventure that we are on. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody, that's going to do it here for us on Friday. Uh, what's coming up? What's coming up? Uh, Monday, we got cord killing and all sorts of good stuff. Great night. Uh, we just did some bones that was oh, very uh, good. Uh, we, uh, I think over the weekend we're supposed to try something kind of wacky uh, on with, Modern Rogue. Uh, yeah. yeah. So make sure you're subscribed over there on YouTube. We got a new episode coming out today. If that's not enough for you, boy, oh boy, you, you, you'll be full by the this by Monday. One. <laughs> All right, folks. Thank you, everybody. We're gonna we're gonna leave you. We're leaving you. We love you. We're leaving you, loving you. <laughs>